life. Secondly, we should also be praying to see them loving God's word. And uh, in loving God's word, uh, just to underscore, and we didn't turn to him, but turn to Job 23. And these are, these are verses you should mark when you're thinking about praying for your children. We are praying for our children that we would see them loving God's word. How do you pray for that? Job 23 is a, is a place to begin. Say, I pray, O Lord, verse 12, that my children, you put their name in there, would treasure the words of your mouth more than their necessary food. That only happens if you already treasure the word that much. If they see you loving God's word more than television, loving God's word more than entertainment, loving God's word more than you know, activities, sports, or whatever, that they see that in you. But then you can pray that they will treasure God's word. You actually ask for that. What did Paul, what does it mean he labored until Christ was formed? Here's Paul, never in Colossae, never being in that assembly, never meeting those people face to face, praying. Look at, look at his prayer in Colossians 1, 9 through 13 or 14. He's praying that they would be filled with the knowledge of God's will. What does that mean? That they would long to get into this book and that they would long to seek to have the mind of Christ and to have the image of Christ impressed deeply on their souls. So, Job 23, verse 12. Now look at Psalm 119. That's the next book, Psalm 119. Here's another verse to pray for them. Psalm 119 and verse 97. And, and again, it's, it's a great habit to learn to pray the scriptures. And it says, oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation all the day. That's the, the statement of the scripture. How do you pray that? Oh, Lord, help, you know, Susie or Billy or, or Johnny or Sally. Help them to love your law. Your word. Now that's a prayer. That that is a an intercessory prayer. I am going before God on their behalf and saying, "Give them a hunger for Your word." I pray that I would see them loving Your word, O God. That they would, as it continues in verse ninety-seven, that they would meditate on it all day long. And you know what? When you pray this, the Lord will will bring into your life times of encouragement when you find out about that. For example, this week. We, we had uh, five of our children deployed out, you know, uh, away from us and deployed. Two of them, of course, are coming back tomorrow, and the other three were at camp where I was speaking. But two of them were on the other side, and I didn't even know what was going on, where they were. They were with a couple hundred other kids. I couldn't wait to, to make contact with them and to hear that they were ministering among those children. Those children were asking questions that even their counselors couldn't answer, and they'd say, oh, well, in Sunday school we heard this, or in church we heard this, and they were actually using God's word. Why, why did the Lord let us find out about that? Because we prayed, verse 97, that they would meditate, that, it, that God's word would fill their hearts all day long so that when the opportunity came, it would come out. You know, whatever you think about all the time comes out. If every time people see you and you're a young person, all you're talking about is, you know, cars or girls or sports, that's what fills your mind. But if the word of God comes out, that's what's filling your mind. And you say, but, but all I hear is sports and cars and, you know, from my kids. Well, are you praying to see them loving God's word? Are you praying, Job twenty three twelve that they would treasure the word of God more than their necessary food? And are you doing it yourself? And are you also praying that they would love God's law and meditate on it all day long? And finally, the last verse is Jeremiah fifteen sixteen, And you say, Lord, help them to find your word. Help them to eat your word. Do you pray that your children will have time in the word? I mean, you should ask them. You should encourage them. You should do all you can. But do you pray? Not just mechanics, not just charts, not just buy them a Bible, not just give them a checkoff thing. But do you pray that they would find God's word and eat them, verse 16 says. And that not only just get more knowledge to win the Bible trivia game, but look at verse 16, it continues, that your word would become the joy and rejoicing of their hearts. And you say, Lord, I pray that my child, and you put in their name, you actually pray this. 